Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day everyone. We're now going to learn about optimization. Uh, learning about optimization is particularly important in economics and business. Remember, economics is basically a science of choice. In economics, we don't merely make a choice, but make an optimal choice. Optimal. The process to find the optimal choice is what we call as uh, optimization. And the common criteria of the choice among alternatives in economics is the goal of maximizing something or minimizing something. At the moment, let's begin with the simplest optimization without constraint and with only one variable. We start as usual with the basic, uh, basic concept, then followed by explanation about how to find and check relative maximum or minimum condition. It includes attempts to satisfy certain necessary and sufficient conditions. Knowing the concept, then we will check the application in some optimization problem and try to solve them all. To begin with, let's distinguish first the difference between optimum and extremum values. In math, what is known is the extremum value. It has no connotation of optimality whatsoever. On the other hand, when we try to achieve one particular objective, the best possible outcome for our objective is the optimum value. Depending on the objective, the optimum value can be a maximum value, just like when we would like to maximize our rewards, our profit, or our contribution, for example. And we can also have a minimum value as our objective. For instance, we may want to minimize our value, our cost, or our waste disposal. We'll be talking about optimization from the simplest case with no constraint and with, and with just one variable, choice variables, to the more complex one with constraint and with more than one choice variable. No matter what kind of uh, optimization is, the following two procedures must be the same. First, we have to find the objective. Are we trying to maximize or minimize? And what is being maximized or minimized? What is the exact variable? And then, after knowing the variable whose value we would like to optimize, we need to know its function, the objective function. Our objective variable is affected by what variables? State the function clearly. For instance, if the objective is to maximize or minimize the value of y, then y must be the dependent variable in our objective function. The independent variable x, on the other hand, is what we call as a choice variable. Optimization basically is to find the value of this choice variable so that the maximum or minimum y can be obtained. How to find the value of choice variable? That's what we're going to learn further. But before that, it is worth noting the terms relative or local extremum and global extremum. To simplify the condition, let us see the domain of our objective function like this. It will then limit the range of the possible values of our objective variable and at the same time give us more real optimization situation which usually contains some specific constraints. As the figure shows, some points like point A and B may be considered global extremum, while the others, C and D, are examples of a relative or local extremum. Points C and D are called relative or local extremum because each of these points represents an extremum in the immediate neighborhood of the point only. However, finding a relative extremum is usually more important because an absolute extremum itself must be either a relative extremum just like point B here, or one of the endpoints of the function, such as point A. Therefore, if we know all the relative maxima, for example, it is necessary only to select the largest of these and compare it with the endpoints in order to determine the absolute maximum. Keeping this in mind, we shall continue the optimization process now. How to find the value of the x, the choice variable? In single variable case, we simply use the first derivative test. 
we differentiate the objective function y with respect to the choice variable x or mathematically expressed as dy per dx and equalize it to zero. From the equalization, we may obtain the critical value. Then accordingly, we find the stationary value and the stationary point, which contains both critical and stationary value. Using the first derivative test, we can find whether the stationary point is a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or an inflection point instead. We may figure it out soon how to do it. Alternatively, using the second or higher order derivative test, we can also find out whether the stationary point is a relative extremum or an inflection point. Now look at the example here. Does this function have relative extremum or inflection point? We know how the function's curve looks like. It must have a relative minimum point. But let's try the procedure to find it out. Finding the first derivative, what can we obtain? dy per dx equalized to 0 gives us this critical value. With x is equal to 2, then we get the stationary value y equals 2. And now we have the stationary point 2.2 to which we try to determine whether it is a relative maximum, relative minimum, or an inflection point. The first derivative test tells us this to check it. We have to check the values of the first derivative of the function when x is less than xo and when x is more than xo. What is the value of the first derivative when x is at the immediate left of the xo or when x is less than xo? It's negative. We may have x equals 0 or x equals minus 1 for instance. Both are at the left of or smaller than 2, our xo. And look at the first derivatives. When x is 0, the first derivative is minus 4, a negative number. When x is minus 1, the first derivative is minus 6, also a negative number. Now, what's the value of the first derivative when x is at the immediate right of the xo or when x is bigger than xo? It's positive. Similar to our previous example, we may choose any number that is bigger than 2, our xo. With x equals 3, we get the first derivative of the function equals 2, a positive number. With x equals 4, we get the first derivative of the function equals 4, also a positive number. So what's the conclusion? Since f prime x, or the derivative, changes its sign from minus to plus, or to positive, from the immediate left of the point xo to its immediate right, then 2.2 is a relative minimum. To best illustrate the condition, let's see the diagram. This is the stationary point resulting from equalizing the first derivative of the objective function to zero. When we choose any number to the left of xo, by calculation, we obtain negative derivative. By diagram, negative derivative means negative slope of our function. So that, so that we will have a downward sloping curve up until point x equals 2. Then to the right of xo, positive derivative means that from xo to the right, the function will now be upward sloping. So negative slope, zero slope, then positive slope are as illustrated by this function's curve. Obviously, our stationary point 2.2 is a relative minimum. Alternatively, as mentioned earlier, we can use second or higher order derivative test to check relative extremum or inflection point. Given our previous example here, and the resulting stationary point from equalizing the first derivative to zero, second derivative test tells us this. So we just have to find the second derivative of our objective function and then find its possible value. The second derivative of our objective function basically is the derivative of the first derivative. 
it can be expressed like the following using double prime or d for d from our example with this first derivative then the second derivative is 2 since the value of our second derivative is uh, positive for all values of x it means that the stationary point 2.2 is a relative minimum Okay, I stop the presentation here. Please comprehend all the things before moving to the next presentation video. And here is to sum up what I have just explained in my presentation. First derivative test and second derivative test will be further examined in my next presentation, along with explanation about their interpretation as well as the other concepts here. Thank you very much for the attention. See you at the next presentation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.